video we will discuss about focal segmental glomerulosiclerosis it is also known as fsgs so what is uh, fsgs we will uh, in this video we will refer to this term as fsgs only so it is a histological pattern of glomerulosiclerosis that means we have many glomerulopathies but this uh, term is used for the histology of the this histology pattern it is not a separate entity with, uh, whereas many diseases can cause this histology and therefore it is known as fsgs so what happens here is so as the name suggests it is focal segmental so firstly going to the word focal focal means that the cyclorosis cyclorosis uh, is in layman terms if we see it is uh, uh, called as scarring so very layman uh, term okay so cyclorosis of not all the glomeruli means if we are studying the uh, glomeruli uh, in a renal biopsy so we will see certain glomeruli will be involved and certain will be just normal so that is focal and in the affected glomeruli also only part of the glomeruli tuft that is the capillary tuft is involved that means segmental that if it, this is the capillary tuft inside the glomerulus only a part of the capillary tuft is involved that means it is segmental therefore the name focal segmental glomerulosiclerosis okay now how does the patient present patient presents here by nephrotic syndrome uh, if I briefly tell you about nephrotic syndrome, there is heavy protein urea in that. Because of that, there is hypoalbuminemia. That means the protein in the body uh, it decreases. Okay, so that is briefly just about nephrotic syndrome. So the uh, 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 focal segmental glomerulosiclerosis manifests mostly as nephrotic syndrome. Now, going to the types of uh, FSGS. So, firstly, it, it can be primary. That means the reason is not known. It is idiopathic. But certain diseases can also cause a nephropathy which resembles that of FSGS, like HIV infection. So, if you see HIV nephropathy, it is on the spectrum of FSGS, heroin nephropathy, sickle cell disease, massive obesity. Then, after it as a secondary event secondary event to certain nephropathies such as IgA nephropathy so IgA nephropathy can lead to FSGS then as a response uh, to certain diseases such as reflux nephropathy so what happens in reflux nephropathy if this is your this is the kidney so there is reflux of the urine back to the kidney so in this because of this repeated trauma there is loss of renal tissue so how the loss of renal tissue can lead to fsgs that is in the pathogenesis we will discuss it so as a response as an adaptive response also sometimes fsgs can take place and lastly there are some genetic causes to uh, certain diseases which can cause uh, fsgs like morphology so firstly we will discuss the genetic part then we will see okay so going to firstly to understand the genetic part you should understand that uh, this is the visceral epithelial cell if you see in uh, a glomerul uh, in the uh, filtration part so this is the visceral epithelial cell then there is endothelium of the glomerulus which is fenestrated so uh, this is the part where the filtration is taking place okay so these this part this is the podocyte of the visceral epithelial cell okay so there is the endothelium of the glomerulus this is the visceral epithelial cell and the podocytes and here the uh, filtration is taking place so that means the blood from here the extracts uh, waste material will go through this filtration slit and then will enter uh, into the uh, it will go for the into the proximal tubules and all that so uh, how uh, this is known as the filtration slit okay so in the filtration slit you can see here is the nephrin okay so the nephrin molecule is there then you have podocin over here then you have actin filaments over here so these all are making a thing known as filtration slit and filtration slit is required for the proper uh, urine processing 
okay so uh, in the earlier video for the minimal chain disease we discussed if there is a mutation in the nephrin it will lead to minimal change disease type of morphology however if there is a mutation in podocin or mutation in actin it leads to morphology uh, of fsgs so let's discuss little bit about the genetic part so uh, firstly the nephrin nephrin i told you nephrin leads to uh, morphology resembling that of the minimal change disease and the disease is known as congenital nephrotic syndrome of finnish type okay uh, so this is the nephrin so going to the next one podocin it is coded by nphs2 gene okay and this leads to fsg this type of morphology also actin binding protein the part of the filtration slit and there is also can also be there is mutation in trpc6 so these are the various mutations okay this is first pathogenesis that is the genetic part which can be uh, which can lead to fsgs type of morphology now the second one is renal ablation fsgs that means there can be certain diseases glomerular or non glomerular which can lead to decrease in the renal tissue okay so you have renal tissue is less okay because of many diseases this can further lead to uh, fsgs because this causes what it causes glomerular hypertrophy okay when there is glomerular hypertrophy what takes place so let's see there is reduction in the renal mass because of any reason okay you can have any glomerulopathy you can have non glomerulopathy okay it leads to glomerular hypertrophy it leads to intra glomerular hypertension because of increase in intra capillary pressure systemic hypertension can also be caused by this okay so all this will lead to what it will not only lead to glomerular hypertrophy it will also cause mesangial cell hyperplasia okay because when there is uh, glomerular hypertrophy okay along with that uh, epithelial and endothelial injury is also going on so when there is endothelial injury it will lead to increase in the protein secretion excretion okay when there is increase in the protein excretion this protein will also get deposited in the mesangium okay there is increase uh, proteins in the mesangium there is extracellular matrix deposition over the mesangium there is mesangial cell hyperplasia also taking place so because of such deposition the capillary tuft okay a uh, area of capillary tuft will have increase in the extracellular matrix okay it will in have increase protein over there there will be hyalinosis over there okay there will be mesangial cell hyperplasia and because of certain factors such as tgf beta there will be also increased fibrosis over there these all things will lead to focal segmental glomerular sclerosis over that area which can further go to global glomerular sclerosis that means the entire uh, segment entire glomerulus can be involved so uh, this we already discussed that the epithelial and the endothelial injury can cause increased permeability to the proteins and there is increased accumulation of protein in the mesangium which causes proliferation of the mesangial cells there is macrophages which is coming there is extracellular matrix deposition there is also tgf beta which is involved it is involved wherever the fibrosis is there so this is this will lead to sclerosis in the glomeruli okay so this is the pathogenesis part now going to the morphology we are talking about focal segmental so what does it mean by the microscopy how we are going to diagnose it so one thing to remember is because this thing is focal so whenever we are taking the biopsy specimen so uh, if we are taking the renal biopsy if there are very less number of glomeruli so the thing can be all together mixed also so the glomeruli should be adequately present okay so because few of the glomeruli will appear just normal only so in the if we are uh, seeing a good renal biopsy so what will be there in the sclerotic segments that means the part of the glomeruli which is involved you will see increase in the matrix there will be collapse of the capillary loops and will be there will be deposition of the proteins which has been leaked 
okay that is known as hyalinosis so this is all which we will be seeing so uh, this disease will go from focal and will go towards global if the disease progresses okay so if you see in this microscopy so you can see this is a very beautiful glomerulus uh, uh, absolutely normal but here in this glomerulus you can see this area uh, one area is more pink okay this is due to deposition of certain it is due to hyalinosis okay you can see there is a uh, deposition of a material okay so this is the affected portion okay over here also you can see this part is affected so this is the a uh, picture which we will see in the focal segmental you have to remember that few glomeruli will be normal okay as the name suggests and what will be there there will be cyclorosis there will be hyalinosis and there will be in, uh, increased extracellular matrix which will be produced on electron microscopy so whenever we discussed a renal pathology we always discuss the light microscopy we discuss the electron microscopy we discuss the immunofluorescence these are the Uh, headings under which we should discuss each renal pathology on electron microscopy the important thing is both the cyclorotic and non cyclorotic areas show one thing which is common that is diffuse effacement of the food processes okay so this is uh, seen in both of uh, the areas that means the podocytes uh, uh, from here uh, this shape will go towards this shape there will be effacement okay and the Uh, this we see then on immunofluorescence what will be there there will be deposition of igm or c3 this is maybe or maybe not then there is a special type of fsgs which is known as collapsing glomerulopathy so what is collapsing glomerulopathy now there are certain variants of fsgs okay we are not discussing each and every variant there is a tip variant there is a perihilar variant but we are discussing little bit about collapsing glomerulopathy because this is the characteristic lesion which is seen in hiv associated nephropathy what happens here is the entire glomerular tuft gets collapsed okay so uh, it has particularly very poor prognosis so if you see over here the entire glomerular tuft will get collapsed okay there is collapsing as the name suggests there is collapsing or retraction of the entire glomerular tuft then what is the clinical picture clinical picture of uh, fsgs is very different from the minimal change disease because in here you will see that there is increase incidence of hematuria there is a uh, protein urea which is uh, non selective that means not only albumin will be secreted other things can also be excreted and it has a poor prognosis that means it will be poorly responding to the corticosteroids then also there is progression to chronic kidney disease also if a patient goes for uh, grafting renal transplantation the disease can reoccur so it has a poor prognosis in that matter this was all about the fsgs do like share sub and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos uh, thank you